If you want your knitting to fit properly, then you'll have to get gauge. What's gauge? Well, I'm glad you asked. We'll talk all about gauge in this video. So you've probably heard knitters talk about gauge. They might say something like, did you get gauge for this pattern? Or what's the gauge on this yarn? Or sure you can use this yarn as long as you get gauge. Gauge. You've heard the word and maybe you kind of know what it is. Sort of, maybe? Eh, I hear you, it's complicated. So before I really understood the concept of gauge, I would knit kind of like blindly. I'd pick a pattern that I really liked and I would use exactly the same needles and yarn that the pattern told me to do. And I figured that should probably be okay, right? And sometimes the pattern actually did turn out okay. I'd have a sweater that fit miraculously or a hat that fit and I'd think like, okay, that's, that's all right. But sometimes my projects would be disastrous, you know, I'd have a sweater that was enormous, a hat that couldn't fit me. One time I knit mittens that were supposed to be for me, but they ended up being so tiny that I gave them to my niece, who's in preschool. So how do we knit things that fit? Well, we do it by getting gauge, because if you don't get gauge, then gauge is gonna get you. Yep, that's a tweetable. <laughs> So I'm gonna bring some friends to help me explain knitting gauge. So this is Bobby and this is Daisy. So Bobby and Daisy want to knit a sweater. In fact, they're knitting the same sweater, which is the Everyday Raglan. This is a pattern put out by Sheep and Stitch. So Bobby and Daisy are knitting the same pattern in the same size and they're even using the same yarn and the same knitting needles. So under these conditions, do you think Daisy and Bobby will end up with identically sized sweaters? Remember, their raw materials are the same, their pattern is the same, and the size they're knitting is also the same. So what do you think? Is there another variable that could throw off the size of their knitted sweater? Now, if you said knitting tension, then you're absolutely right. High five. Knitting tension is unique to each knitter. It basically boils down to how tight or how loose you knit. So let's say Bobby is a really tight knitter. He's a nervous, neurotic type, and he grips his yarn and needles really tightly. Now Daisy over here, let's say she's a really relaxed, kind of a hippie girl, you know? She loves dancing in the sun, she's a vegan, she sings with her eyes closed, she's a really loose knitter. Now because Daisy and Bobby knit at different tensions, their sweater probably won't be the same size even though they're knitting the same pattern, the same size, and they're using the same materials. Because Bobby is a tight knitter, his sweater will probably be smaller than Daisy's. And because Daisy is a loose knitter, her sweater will probably be bigger than Bobby's. And this will happen even if they're using the same raw materials. So imagine how hard this would be for a pattern designer. How's a pattern designer going to design a pattern so that the tightest knitter and the loosest knitter and everybody in between can knit the same pattern and get the same sized garment. Now if you said knitting gauge then cookie for you or cookie for me. Mmm, broccoli. Knitting gauge is a way to standardize knitting tension so that the tightest and the loosest knitter can knit the same pattern in the same size and get identically sized garments. So now you understand the concept of knitting gauge. Yeah, sort of, clear as mud. Okay, next let's look at knitting gauge in the wild. Every pattern will ask for a knitting gauge made up of stitches and rows. So let's take a look at the knitting gauge for the Everyday Raglan pattern. The Everyday Raglan pattern asks for a gauge of 16 stitches and 24 rows to equal four inches or 10 centimeters in stockinette stitch using your larger needles, which is six millimeters. Whew. This means that if you knit 16 stitches and 24 rows in your chosen yarn, needle size, and unique knitting tension, and the knitting measures out to four inches or 10 centimeters on each side, then you've got gauge, woohoo! So if Bobby and Daisy get gauge for this pattern and they follow the instructions for size medium, then they can be assured that their finished sweater will come out to be the same size. So now you know what knitting gauge is, why it matters, and what it looks like in the real world, like in a knitting pattern. Next, we're gonna put this into practice. We'll go through a scenario that you'll likely encounter when you're going through a knitting pattern. We're gonna choose yarn and needles from a pattern and we're gonna try to get gauge with them. So you've chosen a knitting pattern that you like. 
awesome. Next step is yarn and needles. How do you choose them? The best place to look is to the knitting pattern itself. Most patterns include a recommended yarn and needle size. If we look at the everyday raglan pattern, you'll see that the recommended needle size is six millimeters and the recommended yarn is Cascade Yarns Ecological Wool. So these are not set in stone, they're just recommendations, but you can get an idea of the kind of yarn and needle size to look out for. So here we go, I've got my heavy worsted weight yarn and my six millimeter needles. So now I can start testing for gauge. So for this demo, I'll use the everyday raglan pattern. Once again, the gauge for the pattern is 16 stitches in 24 rows equals four inches or 10 centimeters in stockinette. Now, if you're working another pattern, then follow the gauge instructions for that pattern. Okay, so let's start casting on. Now, instead of casting on 16 stitches exactly, I'm gonna cast on an extra eight stitches. So these extra stitches act as kind of a border around my swatch because stockinette tends to curl inwards, which makes measuring it from edge to edge kind of difficult and inaccurate. So I'm going to knit a garter stitch border around my swatch so that it lies flat and is easier to measure. So I'm using stockinette stitch for this demo uh, because knitting gauge is usually done in stockinette stitch, but if your pattern gauge asks for like garter stitch or seed stitch or any other stitch, then just go ahead and use whatever stitch they ask for. So I'm just casting on 16 stitches and I'm also adding on eight extra stitches, which equals a total of 24 stitches. So here's 24 stitches, lovely. And I'm going to knit a couple rows in garter stitch, which is just knitting all your rows. And that's going to form the bottom garter stitch border of my little gauge swatch. All right, so just a couple rows, just straight up garter stitch. So here I've just done three rows or so of garter stitch and now I'm ready to work stockinette stitch. All right, now I wanna leave a two stitch uh, garter stitch border on either side of my swatch. So I'm going to bring in some stitch markers to help me remember uh, where my border starts and where it ends. Okay, so I'm going to just knit two of my first two stitches. Here we go, knit two. And then I'm going to take my stitch marker and just pop that on there. And now I'm just going to do knitting. So we've moved on to the stockinette stitch portion of the swatch. So now I'm just knitting as normal until I get to the last two stitches on this row, at which point I will just slip in my second stitch marker. I've reached my last two stitches and I'm just gonna take my stitch marker and pop it on here and knit those last two stitches. So these two stitches on either side are gonna be garter stitch, whereas the middle portion is all gonna be stockinette stitch. All right, so I'm gonna turn my needle over and work the reverse side, all right? So here are these two stitches. I'm gonna do two stitches in garter stitch. So that's just knitting, knit two. And I'm gonna slip the stitch, stitch marker over and then now I'm going to purl the middle section, which is my stockinette stitch. So this is the section that I'm going to be measuring when I'm measuring my gauge swatch. So stockinette stitch is knitting one row and purling the other. Just a little reminder there. All right, I've reached my last two stitches on the wrong side row of my work. I'm just gonna slip that stitch marker over and knit those last two stitches because these will form my garter stitch border, cool. All right, so now I'm just gonna repeat that all over again. So I'm going to continue in this matter, knitting these two stitches, these two border stitches on either side of my swatch, and I'm gonna work stockinette stitch in the middle, okay? So my pattern gauge asks for 24 rows in stockinette stitch, so I'm gonna knit an extra eh, four or five rows or something like that. Those extra rows just makes measuring it a little bit easier, okay? So for me at least, I need at least 24 rows, but I'll probably end up knitting like 30 rows or so. All right, so here I go. Cool, so I've knit about 28 rows of stockinette stitch, this part in the middle, and now I'm gonna knit like three or four rows of garter stitch to finish off my top border, and then I can just cast off. Ta-da! I have just finished my gauge swatch, it's off the needles, 
and you can see it's just this little square. It's so cute and small. So you can think of this gauge swatch as like a mini me of your final project, which in my case would be a sweater. So we're gonna use this little swatch to test the gauge of our pattern. And this little gauge swatch also gives you like a good idea of what your final project will look and feel like. So this next step is kind of optional. It's also kind of controversial, you know, as controversial as a knitting technique can be. So at this point, you can choose to do one of two things. One, you can measure your swatch and see if you got gauge or not. Or two, you can block your swatch, wait for it to dry, and then measure to see if you got gauge. Obviously, option two requires more work and more time. So I totally understand if you're like, ugh, I don't wanna do this. Um, I get it, it's a lot of suspense building up. You wanna know, did you get gauge or not? But I feel like I need to tell you about the blocking option so that you can decide for yourself whether it's necessary. Okay, so the thinking behind blocking your swatch is based on the fact that your finished knitting project, whatever it is, whether it's socks, sweaters, hat, whatever, is at some point going to get wet, right? And I don't just mean, you know, you get caught out in the rain and it's gonna get wet. It's based on the idea that you're going to wash your finished project at some point, right? I mean, you're not a slob, you're gonna wash it, it's gonna get dirty. So when you wash any knitted item, the stitches tend to relax and fill out a little bit. They tend to, uh, you know, not lengthen, but kind of relax. So your knitting actually gets a little bit looser. Um, and your tension changes. So in order to get a really accurate picture of what your finished project is going to look like, you will want to wash your uh, gauge swatch also so that the fibers can also relax and kind of bloom and you get a really accurate picture of what your finished project is gonna look like. So should you block your swatch? I'm of two minds about this. I think if you're knitting something where the fit is really important, like say you're knitting a sweater, and if you're off by like an inch or two inches in the bust or in the waist, that'll totally throw off the look of the sweater, then you should absolutely block your swatch. Be very accurate. However, if you're knitting, you know, something like a scarf or a shawl or even mittens, then I'm not so sure that I would block my swatch. I think just knitting a swatch would be enough for me. Um, but you know, it really just depends on you. If you want to be super accurate, like an A plus student, then absolutely block your swatch. It can't hurt. It just takes more time. So ultimately, it's really up to you. So how do you block a swatch? Easy peasy. You're gonna take this little square and dunk him in a bit of lukewarm water. Whoa! We're gonna totally submerge our gauge swatch in the water. And if you flipped it over, make sure that all the fibers, all of it's just underwater. Cool. So now we're just going to leave it alone for 15 minutes. All right, so it's been 15 minutes and now I'm going to take my swatch out of the water. So what I'm gonna do is just push out the water as much as I can. All right, just uh, push it out. So I'm not wringing it, okay? I'm not going like this. That's bad, don't do that, okay? The reason why is you don't want your swatch to felt. So just push out the water as much as you can. Now I'm gonna take out a towel and I'm gonna take out my swatch and just lay it out on my towels. I'm going to roll up my towel like this and press it because I want to get as much water out as possible. Cool. So now I'm going to let my gauge swatch hang out and dry, okay? That's all there is to it. Just leave it alone, let it air dry. This can take anywhere from eight to 24 hours depending on the temperature and your climate where you live. So once your swatch is dried, then you have successfully blocked it. So if you block your swatch, then gold star for you. You are the Lisa Simpson of swatching. Well done. Okay, so whether or not you blocked your swatch, now is the moment of truth. Dun dun dun. <laughs> We're going to measure our swatch to see if we got gauge. So I'm gonna get my tape measure out and a couple of stitch markers. If you don't have these, that's fine. They're just a little helpful. Okay, so I'm going to use my stitch markers to mark out the borders of my four inch square. So again, what we're measuring is four inches across our gauge swatch 
and we want to count up how many stitches are in four inches of space, okay? So we're measuring uh, horizontally to measure the stitches, and we're also going to be measuring vertically in order to measure the number of rows that falls within a four inch space. Okay, so let's start with, with rows first. All right, so I'm gonna take my stitch marker and I'm just gonna plant it sort of somewhere on the left side here and I'm going to measure it right beside the beginning of a stitch. So a stitch is just like a little V shape, okay? So like one of these guys, that would be a stitch, that would be a stitch, just a little V shape. So I'm going to start just on the corner, the sort of the left-hand corner here, I'm gonna insert my stitch marker right there, okay? So I'm going to measure from the stitch marker over to four inches. So let's see, where is it? About here. All right, so let's do that. Just insert it in. So I'm just marking off a four inch space so that it'll be easier for me to count up my stitches. All right, so let's start counting. I'm gonna start here and just start counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Awesome, so I got gauge, woohoo! Well, okay, I got gauge stitch-wise, okay? So uh, horizontally across, I got gauge, which is really exciting, oh my gosh. And now I need to figure out if I got gauge vertically, okay? All right, so now we're going to measure vertically. We're gonna measure the number of rows that stack up within four inches, okay? So the number of rows in this four inch um, parameter. All right, so let's take out our stitch markers here because we've already measured out our stitches. So I'm gonna measure out like somewhere in the middle here and I'm gonna just go yeah, like around here, okay? So the bottom of the stitch. So again, there's a V shape here and I'm just gonna measure, or excuse me, I'm going to put in my stitch marker at kind of the bottom of the V. I can actually measure that entire V shape, if that makes sense. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay, so here it is, and I'm going to measure from this point. So around here, okay. So I'm just measuring up, and let's put in a stitch marker here. Okay, so that's about four, that's four inches. Cool. Okay, so now I'm going to count up the number of rows that I have between these two stitch markers, which equals a four inch uh, space. All right, so let's go. Here's one. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if you ever get confused, I usually just put my needle or whatever I'm using to measure or to count just right down, <laughs> okay? I'll sort of reorient my you know, eyes and then start again. Okay, so that was five, right? Okay, was it? Oh gosh, see, I'm getting confused myself. All right, let's start again. Okay, so I'm counting from here. Okay, so from here, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I can put my needle down if I'm feeling dizzy or confused. Okay, so that's ten. All right, reorient myself. And okay, here we go. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22, 23, 24, ah, I totally got Gage. Who got Gage? I got Gage. Who got Gage? Who has two thumbs and got Gage? That would be me. This girl. Oops, my thumbs aren't even pointing correctly. This girl, yeah. Okay, so I'm a little excited right now because it was a long time coming, but I got Gage. I got 16 stitches and 24 rows equals the Gage that I need to knit my sweater. And I got gauge, my gauge swatch proved that. So I'm really happy right now, as you can tell. And if you get gauge, I'm sure you'll be really, really happy as well. All right, so now that I know that when I knit my pattern using this yarn and my six millimeter needles, then my finished sweater will be the exact size listed in the finished measurements. 
So I'm confident because my gauge swatch matches up with the pattern gauge, okay? So this is really exciting. And now I'm good to go. I can take the yarn and needles that I chose and start knitting. Woohoo! All right, let's get real. What happens when you don't get gauge? Not all of your gauge swatches are going to be perfect. The stars aren't always going to align. Sometimes your stitches and rows are just gonna be a little off. The problem falls in two categories. Either you have too few stitches and rows or you have too many stitches and rows. These are pesky problems, but I've got solutions. So first up, we're gonna tackle what to do when you have too few stitches and rows. If you have fewer stitches than the required gauge, then your gauge is too large. All right, so we're gonna use this swatch as an example. So for me, the gauge that I'm trying to get is 16 stitches and 24 rows equals four inches. So let's take a look at this swatch here. I'm gonna use this little gauge contraption. <laughs> um, you can get this um, you know, on Amazon or most yarn stores. This just measures out a four inch window um, vertically and horizontally, so it makes measuring your gauge a little bit easier. But of course you can just use a regular you know, tape measure if you don't have this guy. But for the sake of this demo, I'm just gonna use this. It's a bit easier. Okay, so when I put this little four inch window on top of this gauge swatch, I can see that, let's measure out or count up the number of stitches that we have and the number of rows. So the number of rows, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Do you like my little song? <laughs> 17 stitches or 17 rows vertically. So that's less stitches or less rows than we need for our gauge. And um, stitch wise, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and a half. All right, so 10 and a half stitches across. Again, less stitches than we need. Okay, so in terms of stitches and rows, we have less than the target gauge. All right, so what does this mean? All right, so this means that my yarn is simply too big. It's so big that it only takes, what was it, 10 and a half stitches across um, to get up to four inches, whereas I need 16 stitches to get to four inches. So the yarn is just simply too big. When I'm thinking about this, I like to imagine that the stitches are like lemmings or hamsters or some other creature. It helps to visualize the actual component of a gauge swatch. So in this situation, I need 16 hamsters across and 24 hamsters tall in order to meet my gauge. But here, I've only got 10 and a half hamsters across and 17 hamsters up. All right, so what's the problem? Well, the hamsters are just, they're too big. <laughs> I need to shrink them so that I can fit five and a half more hamsters across and uh, let me just do some math, uh, seven more hamsters up, okay? So if I substitute hamsters with stitches, well, the principle still remains, right? With this gauge swatch, the yarn is too big. So we need to shrink the stitches so that we can fit more hamsters or stitches into that four inch square. So how do we do that? All right, coming up, two ways to reduce the gauge. So we can go down by like half a millimeter to one millimeter increments until you get gauge. So reducing the needle size can reduce the gauge. And in our case, we need to shrink our stitches or our hamsters or our stitch hamsters. We wanna shrink these down. So we can do that by shrinking down the needle size. So on this swatch, I used a 10 millimeter needle and I can reduce my needle size to like a nine millimeter or like an eight millimeter like this and see if I can get gauge with a smaller needle size, okay? So I can continue going down uh, my needle size. So if eight millimeters doesn't work, I'm still, you know, my stitches are still too big, right? There's too few stitches in my gauge swatch. I can reduce down to a seven millimeter or a six millimeter. So we can reduce the needle size in order to increase the number of stitches in our gauge swatch. But there's a downside to this. As you reduce your needle size, the fabric will become tighter and tighter and stiffer. Okay, so 
the resulting fabric may be so stiff that you don't even really want to work with it anymore. You might end up getting gauge, but the fabric itself is not so nice to touch, it's not so nice to, you know, to have on your body. All right, so you should keep that in mind as you are reworking your gauge, okay? The smaller the needle size, the stiffer your fabric will be. If you find that your fabric is too tight, then you can move on to option two. So most people are not crazy about this option because they get kind of attached to their yarn and I totally get that. But if changing your needle size doesn't get you gauged, then this is sort of the last option that you have. So back to the swatch, this yarn that I used is a super bulky weight yarn, which is several levels thicker actually than the recommended yarn for my pattern. So if I choose a yarn weight that's lighter, like let's say a heavy worsted weight or even a chunky weight, then I'm much more likely to hit the knitting gauge that I need. And this is a photo of the yarn weight family, just to give you an idea of the yarn weights that are available. So this brings us to our next gauge problem, which is on the opposite end of the spectrum. What do you do when you have more stitches or rows than what you need? All right, that's coming up. If you have more stitches or rows than your required gauge, then your gauge is too small. So my pattern gauge is 16 stitches and 24 rows, but on my gauge swatch here, I've got well, I've counted this up in advance, and I've got 29 stitches across and 46 rows up um, within a four inch space, okay? So there are just too many stitches inside this four inch space, all right? We need to enlarge, we need to embiggen, we need to make our stitches bigger in order to meet our pattern gauge. All right, so what do you think this means? All right, so if you said the yarn is too small, then you're right. This situation is the exact opposite of the last problem where the gauge was too big because the yarn was too big. In this situation, the yarn is simply too small. Okay, so back to the hamster analogy. When your gauge is too small, that means that you have more hamsters or stitches or stitch hamsters than you need. Your four inch square is overrun with hamsters. You've got an infestation. There's just too many of them across and above. There are so many of them because they're really small. So more of them can fit into your four inch gauge swatch. All right, so how do you remedy this? Option one, increase the needle size. Sounds familiar, right? In our last example, we decreased the needle size. In this scenario, we can increase our needle size by half a millimeter to a full millimeter and swatch again to see if we can't hit our target gauge. Now, just like with our first example, there's a potential downside to increasing your needle size. Increase too much and your fabric can become really loose and almost lacy and kind of see-through. So you might not like the way that your fabric um, becomes when you've increased your needle size. So you've got to balance the feel of the fabric versus getting the right gauge. So the other little trick I have for a small gauge is blocking. Yes, we return to blocking. Option two, blocking your swatch. Blocking can be a real help for gauge swatches that are too small. So think about it. My gauge swatch here is 20, 29 stitches and 46 rows. I need 16 stitches and 24 rows. So, I mean, what if I just like stretched my gauge swatch, right? If I just stretched it out and blocked it in this shape, and now suddenly I have fewer stitches in this four inch square, right? I mean, this is kind of comical right now, but I mean, logically it kind of works, right? So. By blocking our swatch, we're actually making our yarn relax. And as a result, the fabric stretches out. Um, and a lot of the times your gauge problems can be blocked out. Now this is a really extreme example because I mean, this, this swatch is clearly way too small to meet my gauge, my gauge requirements. Um, but you know, if your gauge swatch is like short by a few stitches or a few rows, then you can absolutely block your swatch, stretch it out and meet your gauge that way. So if your swatch is too small and you're short by like a couple stitches or a couple rows, then go ahead and just block that swatch and see if you can't like push and pull and massage your swatch so that it meets your target knitting gauge. More often than not, blocking will enlarge or embiggen <laughs> your gauge swatch that's too small and problem solved. 
If blocking does the trick, then awesome. You can use the yarn and needles you originally used and start knitting your pattern. So if all else fails, then consider switching to a heavier yarn weight. I know it's painful and I know you're really attached to your yarn, but sometimes no amount of fiddling with needle sizes and blocking is gonna get you the gauge that you need. It's really sad, I know. It's kind of like, you know, Cinderella's slipper. No matter how hard those stepsisters try to cram their feet into that slipper, it ain't gonna happen. And so it is with knitting gauge sometimes. So when all else fails, consider going up to a heavier yarn weight. So here's a quick chart that summarizes how to troubleshoot your knitting gauge. So there you have it. Now you know how to knit a gauge swatch, measure it, and also troubleshoot it in case you don't get the gauge that you need for your pattern. Thanks so much for watching, guys. This has been a pretty technical video about a dry but very important topic. So remember, if you want to knit something that fits, then you gotta get gauge. If you like this video, then give it a big thumbs up. And if you love this video, then do subscribe. I'm Davina from SheepAndStitch.com. Thanks for watching. Happy knitting. Don't forget to get gauge. Bye.